The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. Are we going to get a vote today in the House? I think we are. We'll see how it goes. All expectations are it will pass. But as we know, uh, anything can happen when it comes to politics, especially where we are right now. Markets this morning picking things up in negative territory. A little bit of an acceleration yesterday. We extend that acceleration to lower prices below 4,200. We're making pre-market session lows as we speak right now. 4,194. You're negative by about half a percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 down about half a percent as well. 14,324. You got the Dow off about three tenths percent off 121 points, just under 33,000. 32,965 in the Russell off by eight points at 1762. How about crude? We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. We always talk some crude, man. Can't wait to get his take. Crude almost got a 66 handle this morning. Yeah, we were just trading at a 73 handle. Back things up about 36 hours ago this morning. 67.72, the price of crude. Gold contract up by about three dollars at 1980. We got notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price and lower yield, although we get a little bit of a drop off since uh, about 8.30. We're still positive by seven ticks in the 10 year right now. We're positive by nine ticks in the 30 year right now. You jump over to the dollar index, DXY. There's some volatility for you up to 104.63. We get some China data overnight. China looks to be slowing down, man. They're dealing with another outbreak of COVID. Nonetheless, that's not the only factor they're dealing with, man, as they have a slowing economy, slowing growth. The days of China growing at 6, 7, 10 percent gone at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, yeah, not quite the case. So that's going to weigh on things. World's second biggest economy, not growing at the rate that they potentially thought it would grow at. So where do we go from here? Back to the S&Ps right now. You want to see something interesting, folks? I was looking at this last night, okay? Check this out, right? You take a look at the S&Ps. Now, there's been a lot of talk of easy money, right? Zero percent interest rates, quantitative easing okay you've heard jp morgan uh excuse me you've heard jamie diamond almost synonymous right jp morgan jamie diamond synonymous uh jamie diamond has talked about the quantitative tightening is one of the things that he's most worried about okay everything going on zero interest rates free money we had negative interest rates for a while uh we'll have to go back and get a clip of our man larry pesavento saying over and over and over and over doesn't work that way folks okay not sure what's going on but you don't pay somebody else to hold your money that's not how it works we had it for a while point being things might have gotten a little bit out of whack in terms of how exuberant the market got and when you think about something right the tra trajectory of the market on a longer term basis okay and this is just taking back the s p you can do this on a lot of different occasions okay but if you just cherry pick where we went in terms of going back as far as i can on the s p futures to 1983 OK, and then you cherry pick the first bubble high we got in 2000. OK, now that is taking a trajectory on my chart. And this is food for thought and nothing else, folks. OK, food for thought and nothing else. But it shows you how extraordinary the run has been to the upside. And maybe we need a little bit of recoil to the downside. OK, I'm giving you the bearish take. I get it. But boy, you don't have runs, folks, where you go from 650 to 5000 almost in the S&P over a period of what? 10 to 12 years and you're talking about a pullback okay for some context here because context is important barely to the 236 it's not usually how things go okay now if you take the cherry pick high of 2000 you build a trend line where do we come into well we come into where we were coming into 2018 we were just above that level coming into covid you accelerated above that you almost got back down to that okay we keep your eye on it because that's almost a rosy scenario in terms of you're talking about growth i mean imagine this trajectory line if you told me in 2009 okay when we were making lows at 665 that, hey, the trend line here has the S&P at about 2,200, 
okay? Maybe we have the potential to accelerate high. I say 2200 man. You're talking about almost four times the value of where the stock market's at right now. It's going to take forever for this market to catch back up with that trend line because it's going to keep going up. You're telling me the market's going to have to trade to what? From 600 to almost 3000 over a period of the next 10 years or something like that to hit that trend line? And that's what it did, folks. And then what did it do? It traded 2,000 points above that. Anyway, I was playing with that last night on the charts, man. Keep your eye on it because, I mean, the world is not ending if we come back to this trend line, folks. And this trend line is sitting at about 3,300, 3,200. Again, food for thought, okay? Not even, you know, uh, technical analysis and I'm paying attention. But I found that interesting last night that even on a longer-term basis where you accelerate a trend line from the cherry-picked high of the 2000 bubble, okay? That's where we chopped around during COVID as well. And then we get all the way above it, man. So don't think the world's ending there. But boy, we are dealing with some lofty levels when you talk about tech companies, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you do something like that in a video. You only go back to the year 1999 when it was at 30 cents, let alone the run really began uh, 2019, right? When the world took off, when NVIDIA is trading at $29, we're trading at $394. You're giving back some of it, man. I was talking about it in my program yesterday. NVIDIA right now, folks, trading at 25 times forward sales not earnings sales every single dollar they take in in revenue their company is trading 25 times forward sales not revenue uh microsoft is pushing like 12 or 13 times sales when you do the numbers on microsoft you're talking about a much larger number in revenue versus nvidia and you're talking about 12 to 13 times that you are at sales. I mean, if you understand how a company works, folks, many times, yeah, these companies, the tech companies, they got huge margins, to say the least, okay? But be careful, because you start hearing these multiples, man. And, um, you know, our man Kevin Hinks talks about it all the time. We're going to talk to him coming up after the first break, right? Competition, man, competition. Uh, put it put it lightly. NVIDIA, they're in a class of their own. Microsoft, you could say, in a class of their own. But they got about seven stocks that are competing right now. And they all are getting pretty lofty levels. You take a look at Apple on a longer term basis. Let's pull it back. You got to go five year weeklies to get the full COVID action now. Microsoft comes into COVID at 80 bucks, dives down to 57. We just traded up to 178.99, folks, which is where Apple was trading at in the final week of 2021. So you got Apple trading near all time highs. OK, you got Microsoft pushing basically all time highs. Google's in a different class. They might be losing their monopoly. Um, Google, man, you want a short candidate. OK, you think this market's going to pull back? Google might be right, right up to the 618. And Google is going to be a tremendous player in AI, folks. The amount of money they're spending is going to matter when it comes time for these companies to really start competing but I think the writing's on the wall that they're losing their monopoly, man. I think about it all the time myself for my own personal use when I'm talking about search items and, and stuff like that. There's a number of things now when I go to search the internet that I say to myself, maybe I should go to ChatGPT for that. Think about the change that has occurred when for 20 years you only went to one place. You went to Google. And that's changed, man. And Google controls 90% of the search on the internet they have for 20 plus years and that is gone so be careful on google i was checking out this chart over the weekend right to the 618 of that pullback okay right to the 618 we got a lot of volume at these lows man so be careful on google this morning got a little debt limit in focus uh we got jobs coming up in 48 hours on friday that's looming as well market trading down 19 points at 41.96 stay tuned folks we're coming back talking to our man kevin hanks we'll be right back if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P down about 19 points right now. That's down about half a percent. NASDAQ 100 down about four tenths percent, trading 14,336. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network with Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the whole team. <clears throat> Excuse me. They got a great lineup of guests, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. We got some great companies coming out with earnings tonight after the bell. We got a debt limit vote today. We got jobs numbers on Friday. We got a lot happening. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, it looks like as the debt ceiling moves along its path, the markets are starting to pay attention to inflation again and Fed speakers and the fact that they're still a, now above a 60%. Yesterday it was 66%. It's moving back and forth in the 60s. Chance that in 14 days they're going to raise interest rates again, Tommy. And it looks like it's a little late, but it looks like the markets are starting to pay attention to that suddenly. Uh, I believe that, you know, the economic data that the Fed speakers have been crying out is too strong. Inflation's not coming down, and they need to stay on it. So there'll be more Fed speakers today, Susan Collins, Michelle Bowman, Philip Jefferson, Patrick Harker, all speaking today. And I expect that rhetoric to remain consistent, that inflation, as, as you and I have been talking about for a couple of weeks now, Tommy, it has stopped coming down. And in many cases, like wages and year-over-year uh, -year PCE has gone back up. So, yeah, the Fed's got a little problem here. And even though... The market, it seems, has had their its attention on the debt ceiling. Suddenly and very quietly, the uh, you know the inflation and interest rates in the U.S. dollar have crept higher, and now they're starting to deal with that. So, at least to start the day, futures a little softer, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, the, you guys do such a great 
job, Kevin, on the program Fast Market. I was listening to the conversation you were talking about NVIDIA and AMD yesterday, but I've also heard you even last week when we got a little bit of that sell-off from, I got a chart of the S&P futures up here on the Thinkorswim platform, traded from about 42.20 down to 41.20 over the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday last week. And I remember watching your program saying, you know, we're sitting at 4,200, man. You know, if you were thinking about lighting up, you know, that's not a bad spot with everything we have going on. As traders, Kevin, you just said it so well, man. It's pretty much up in the air, 60%. It's pretty close to 50%. And you think about the market, and we can say we know we're coming to an end at some point, but it seems like that point keeps getting pushed off a little bit further in the past as inflation is just a little bit stickier than maybe some anticipated. So as traders, Kevin, you approach some pretty important data. We got the jobs number on Friday. That's going to be an important one, especially if we get a miss in one way or the other. And we have that rate hike potentially looming that was going to be a pause. Now it's definitely a live meeting. As a trader, and you approach those types of, I guess, you know, um, points in the market where you're going to get economic data, economic, whether it's the Fed decision, whether it's the jobs, how do you approach those, Kevin? It's a little bit of a big picture question. But for instance, the Fed, we're going to get a decision two weeks from today. It's going to be in the middle of the market at 2, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, as a trader, are you are you trying to anticipate that, Kevin? Are you are you, you know, how do you approach that? I always love you get such an experience, man, and I, I find it so fascinating that we're so up in the air, sixty percent. I mean, that's pretty close to fifty, and I think the market really could have a reaction. Do you try and peg that yourself? Do you just try and manage your risks? Do you have do you try and figure out your own opinion and then pick the best strategy? How are you going to approach two weeks from today, man, where it seems like things are going to be kind of up in the air? Well, Tommy, as a trader, as someone who looks at the market on a daily and hourly basis, what you try to do is see the storm before the clouds come, right? And, and look on the horizon. Is there anything that may cause me to go either bullish or bearish, right? It could be either direction. And that's what I think you're seeing right now. And maybe do you take risk off the table or take you know, put deltas on against your portfolio or do aggressive hedging or, or uh, mild hedging, that's the, that's the problem. When do you put your offense on the field? When do you put your defense on the field? And with the run this market has had and the stubbornness of inflation and what the Fed is saying, this may be a time to put some of your defense on the field or at least, Tommy, take some of your offense off. Could there be storm clouds? Yeah, of course there could be, right? And so you've always got to be ready for some things are on the calendar. And, of course, as you know, Tommy, some things are not on the calendar. And so you've right. got to be ready in some way, shape, or form for both of those. And so I, if you're looking at your, your account, uh, looking at your portfolio, understanding your risk, you know, using the tools that are out there like covered calls, like beta weighting a portfolio and putting deltas against your overall risk. There's several ways to do it. It's just a matter of how much you want to dig into that, um, you know, risk averse trading or risk adjustment. So yeah, there's lots of things you can do. It's just a matter of how much your education, how much you want to do. That's what we try to provide. We'll give someone as much education as they desire in terms of looking at their portfolio, Tommy. I know it's a big picture question, man, not an easy one. I appreciate you taking the time to answer it. And that's why I tell you, folks, I mean, if you don't trade active options and you're not looking to, you know, buy advanced multi-strategy, check out the program because these strategies, you can use them to protect yourself like Kevin was just talking about, whether you're talking about just perfect, protecting your equity portfolio at a time when, because I love the conversation last week, Kevin, when you're saying, you know, 4,200, if you're thinking about lightening up, it's just, you know, you look at the NASDAQ my 100, my goodness, it just keeps going up, Kevin. We're approaching what? 27, 30%. I don't even know where we are right now, those stocks. We've pulled back from the highs yesterday. Um, but I also love the comment you made yesterday talking about NVIDIA and AMD. I think you said something like, Kevin, are they great stocks? Are they going to be around? Of course they are. Does that mean the stock price is going to go up? Of course it doesn't. Because, folks, we are at some lofty levels right now, man. I heard right. yesterday, Kevin, I'm I might have mentioned NVIDIA. I think they're at 25 times forward sales, not earnings, sales, which is just a remarkable number when you think about how you put a price on a company that you got to take in revenue for 25 years and every dollar goes to the bottom line and that's where you get a market cap. Now, of course, they're going to grow tremendously over 25 years, but still some pretty lofty numbers. 
With that in mind, Kevin, as we talked about yesterday, we get some great companies coming up after the bell tonight with earnings. With everything else going on, what are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today, man? Easy show to plan today, Tommy, as you know, with the bulk of the earnings for this week, uh, you know, concentrated today and tomorrow. So we'll trade Salesforce that has earnings coming out. We'll trade Chewy, like Foley will do presentation on Chewy, the yes. online pet food uh, delivery system, and then CrowdStrike in the final segment. George Tillis and the group will look at CrowdStrike. So three really good names all coming out with earnings either after the bell today or before the open tomorrow, Tommy. So all tradable today. Three good ones today. Yeah, pretty cool. I was jumping around on the Thinkorswim platform as you were saying that on a day where we got right across the board, man, we got CrowdStrike up by 50 cents to a dollar in the pre-market and Salesforce uh, higher as well ahead of their numbers. So the market a little optimistic on a negative day for those two equities and Chewy always in the press as well. Kevin, I appreciate it, man, on a busy morning. I look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it, okay? I always tell you, if you don't trade options actively, you should understand them because it will allow you to be a better trader when it comes to equities. And what Kevin just talked about, okay? Deltas, right? Managing your risk, hedging, advanced hedging, aggressive hedging. Please check out the program at 12 o'clock. It's a great week to do it, man. We got the debt ceiling. We got earnings. We got jobs numbers on Friday. We got a Fed meeting in two weeks. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you open right near pre-market session lows, 4194 in the S&Ps. You get the NASDAQ 100 down about 70 points right now. That's about half a percent. You got the Dow off about four tenths percent right now, 32,947. Let's jump around. Call them the Magnificent Seven. We got. We need a new name for the Fang stocks, man, because they they're out. And we'll call it, we got, I'm going to think of a name for these magnificent, magnificent seven. We're going to talk about it soon. Uh, but let's jump around. Amazon shares, quite the acceleration on Friday with AI in focus. They're hanging on to a lot of those gains. Uh, basically flat for Amazon shares right now. Apple shares open the day up about two tenths, a little bit of a lift on the open there. Microsoft shares up about two tenths as well. NVIDIA shares down a percent, 397. Let's see, they're hanging on to the trillion dollar mark. They're pretty close. Where are they? Just under that level now, $981 billion for NVIDIA. Meta, down about 1% right now for Meta shares, up to almost 270 on yesterday. We're down to 260 right now for Meta. I think Tesla is the one that rounds that out. Tesla gets a little bit of a bid, up about three tenths percent. Yeah, that is where I got it. Okay, I got it from the Yahoo article. The Magnificent Seven, no wonder it was in my head. We're gonna have to come up with a better, better name than that then. Uh, Check out some of these numbers, folks, in terms of what we're talking about here, okay? Even the NASDAQ 100, okay? Even the NASDAQ 100, you're talking about $4 trillion in gains in market cap year to date in the NASDAQ 100, okay? And of that, those seven account for 84% of that number. Yeah, 84%. The bottom 93 companies in the NASDAQ 100, okay? We're not talking about the S&P. We're not talking about the Dow. OK, you don't have regional banks in here towing things down. You're talking about the Nasdaq 100. The bottom 93 stocks have only accounted for 15.9 percent of the gain, which is basically less than Apple, Microsoft and NVIDIA alone for market cap. I mean, look at that pie, man. It is all those companies. You're talking about Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Google. I didn't get to. We got to pull up Google, Amazon, Meta and Tesla. Pretty remarkable, man. Um, the concentration that you are seeing in some of those top gainers where they are. And we're at some pretty lofty levels. So, you know, when I hear things like NVIDIA, 25 times sales, folks, would you ever buy a company for 25 times its sales? I don't know. I don't know if I'd do that. Y you can, and it doesn't mean you can't make money. Okay. But be careful when you're buying a company for that type of a lofty level. NVIDIA shares down about a percent today. Still about $100 above where it was trading at a week ago, though, okay? Still about $100 above where it was trading at just a week ago on NVIDIA. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines that we got going on today. Kevin was talking about it, a little bit of a Fed speak uh, day, as we got Cleveland President Loretta Mester. Now, she is not a voting member. It is important to differentiate when you get these types of wordings in terms of whether they're voting or not. Says there's no reason to pause the U.S. rate hikes. OK, I don't really see a compelling reason to pause, meaning wait until you get more evidence to decide what to do. I would see more of a compelling case for bringing rates up and then holding for a while until you get less uncertain about where the economy is going. OK, now what I really want to get to is this chart right here. This is all you need, folks. Pay attention to this chart. Keep it in your head. This is core PCE. This is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. OK, look at this chart. And think about, does this chart give you the confidence to say we're on our way back to 2%? Of course it doesn't, okay? Of course it doesn't. Does that mean that we're not on our way back to 2%? Of course it doesn't. We could be on the way back there. There could be some serious lags. We could pause and we could get there. But that involves some hope, okay? That involves some hope. Because if I gave you this chart and I said to you, write me a thousand word essay on why this chart illustrates that inflation is on its way back to two percent i think you'd look at me like i had three eyes and i was losing my mind because i would be because this chart does not illustrate that we're on our way back to two percent folks okay change in inflation adjusted personal consumption month over month ticking up right as kevin was saying change in core personal consumption expenditures price index year over year ticking up and not even ticking up we are stuck at 4 to 5% right now. You were under 5% by, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, a year ago. We were under 5% a year ago, and we're at 47 right now. Be careful, man, okay? Uh, we haven't had this come about in, what, 40-plus years? And somehow everybody thinks that they know how this thing works. I don't know how it works. Do you know how it works? Well, we all got opinions, okay, but I don't know how it works. 
and I'm I'm open to the idea that things are going to happen that we're not aware of how they're going to happen. And inflation has shocked everybody how persistent it has been. That's the right word I was looking for, okay? How persistent inflation has been. Don't think that it's just going to stop all of a sudden, folks, okay? Companies have cover, man. They got cover to raise their prices, and I don't see them stopping anytime soon unless they have to, and they don't have to yet. So why would you? Right. It's as simple as that. But boy, you look at that chart, man, and you tell me that they're going to come out two weeks from today and say that we're on the way back to two percent. We're confident we are. We're going to stop hiking and see what happens. The risks far outweigh the rewards if you let inflation persist. And if it ever roars its head back up, it's a lot more difficult to get it under control. So you have to consider that. Chairman Powell is aware of this data, okay? And Chairman Powell is aware that he is going to be in the history books, okay? His name is going to be in the history books. It's going to be tied to the COVID pandemic and the generational inflation that ensued. And the end of that paragraph, the end of that chapter, it's probably a better word uh, wording, hasn't been written yet. And what's he wanted to say? Does he want it to say that he erred on the side that they got inflation under control and potentially caused a little bit more harm than was necessary and then they pulled back hard? Or does he want the chapter to be written that they allowed inflation to rage and that he didn't have the gall to do what was necessary and get inflation under control? I think it's a simple one, man. And I think you got to err on the side that they are going to be sure that inflation is under control. And I can't imagine you're looking at charts like that and you could be that confident. OK, I think they know that they're approaching the level because we're at such lofty levels. OK, maybe we get one more. Maybe we start to see it. The economic data is going to be important. We get the jobs number on Friday. They're looking for a number of about 200,000 jobs added. That's not going to squash the economy, folks. You can't add 200,000 plus jobs every single month with unemployment at around 3.5 percent with wages going up. 7% the same job, 14% if you're changing jobs, and somehow that's going to quell generational inflation. I know I'm harping up the tree. I know we've heard it all before. But when I see charts like that, folks, you could tend to spend a whole hour, right, talking about how that happens. Now, Loretta Mester, she is not a voting member. She's a member of the FOMC, okay, so she matters. Her voice is going to be heard in that discussion. But nonetheless, we'll see where we go from there. We're getting a little Fed speak to kick things off. All right, what else we got? How about cars? Advanced auto parts. Yeah, not so much. This thing's been like a one-way ticket to higher prices, but that not happening today, man. Oh, no, that's Apple. Excuse me. AAP. Come on. Jeez, AAP. You know what? My brain, I can't type AAP without typing the L afterwards. Isn't that funny? I just did it three times. My brain. Uh, there's advanced auto parts for you. Down 31%. Oh, no. Yeah, not so much, man. That is remarkable. Look at this. Oh, be careful, man. You just broke out of that channel line, and that was a downtrend channel already. Advanced Auto Parts down 31%. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Teddy Kegstat. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, Subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, 
the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures down about 16 points right now. That's about four tenths percent in the red trading just under 4,200. We're negative by 16 points as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report. He puts a new issue out every Monday morning, folks. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. Teddy Kegstat, interesting day. Uh, always Wednesday. Seems like we got some action going on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a lot of holiday reaction going on here from the, you know, we have a four day work week this week. I love it. We need four day work weeks more often, man. I can dig those <laughs> three day weekends. Uh, yeah. Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Interesting. We got so much going on in terms of it seems like we're just barely over the cusp of the, the debt deal. It seems we'll see how today goes at least. Uh, but we're two weeks out from a Fed meeting, man. We got inflation raging. We got some Fed speak going on out there and we got a live meeting, man, where Somehow we're now at 60 percent that we're going to get another hike. Where do you want to start things off? Uh, well, I definitely you know where I stand on the hiking thing. We're going to be hiking for the next six months. So uh, but as far as if you look at what happened over from Friday up until yesterday, especially in today with the uh, 30 year bond market and the 10 year, you know, it's showing that we've had a nice little bounce pullback in yields, which is normal considering we've had an over a nine handle drop in the past just over a month, if yeah. you will. You know, so I think right now you're seeing a correction there and it's probably going to make the dollar stumble a little bit over the next couple of days if the, if the yields stay low like they are right now. You know, and we're heading into a Fed meeting. So I, this is kind of like the, you know, right now it's the head fake going the opposite direction before they pull the trigger. You know, so I think that's why you're seeing the dollar index kind of stall on resistance. We had a nice, you know, trade on Friday before the holiday weekend. And then uh, we basically had it was basically unchanged on Friday. Uh, so and then we have, you know, now what's happened over the you know session so far yesterday into today. And I would be use caution with this market right now when it comes to dollar index. So because you have some of your majors that are acting, you know, like the yen, for instance, I would be very cautious trying to fade that bull right now. Um, even the sw dollar Swiss, which is, you know, overall, it's a long term bear versus, you know, the dollar or bull versus the dollar. But right now it's having a nice bearish retracement. So I think you're going to see a lot of action to that upside right now. Um, I think the euro right now is going to be really skittish over the next uh, week or so. And same with the pound also. So be very careful with the two with those two majors yeah i was jumping around as you were doing that of course in the end man that's quite a chart you pull up the euro it's been quite a pullback from 111 almost to 106 nice or 107 four basis points i was i read your newsletter of course every monday teddy and i was checking out the dollar index which i know you've given us quite an education breaking down the individual pairings and what's going on in those and then of course the dollar so critical with the euro and so forth but i loved how you had in there a dragon doji 
up there recently. <laughs> was that Friday's action and talking that about a Friday. bullish a bullish signal? Could you just talk a little bit about that? And even you know what, I'm going to pull it over, folks. Uh, check out the Tiger Forex report, for, report, folks. This is the chart he's gotten here on the issue that came out on Monday. And could you just talk a little bit about that? Because I love that chart. I love how you have the correction zones of where we're looking at in each one. And I know you are into candlesticks, which so many of our listeners love. Um, and maybe just talking a little bit that about the critical swing high. I've got the chart up here, Teddy, from the newsletter in terms of what mm -hmm. you're talking about for that dollar index. Okay, that's a great point to bring up. You know, when I was doing the newsletter for, uh, for this week, I was looking at how the dollar index you know, settled on Friday. And that particular pattern, typically when you have such a long range and you have basically an, a, a same opening and close, there's, you, normally you would think that that's a lot of indecision when, you, when your opening and close is the same. And that typically is the case. But when you have a doji like this where it has a very long leg to the downside and not much of a head wick above the uh, opening and close uh, prices, that typically means it's very bullish. And especially when you come on top of a very long trend, you know, like it has, it's pretty steep going into, uh, you know, Friday's trade and the close of Friday. So when I was looking at it, I was looking at like the, you know, the euro and the pound and the, and the yen. And you can see we've been talking about this divergence that's been going on in the uh, currencies, especially amongst the majors. And, you know, normally you would think when you have a signal like that on Friday, especially coming into a Fed meeting, we probably see some sideways action. And, and we very well may, you know. Um, but I think what you're seeing here is the, 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 the wherewithal, if you will, of the bulls is that no matter how hard you want to hit this market, it wants to seek higher highs right now. You know, so I'm not saying that the, the dollar index is a raging bull, but you can see how it reacted yesterday and how it's reacting today. If it was pausing and wanted to have a little bit of a short term correction, we should be leaning on the offer, especially going in from yesterday afternoon into today. And that's not the case. And if you look at how like it's panning out with some of those other major crosses, I think that's showing you how the dollar index right now is it really is right now. It's, it's basically it hasn't plateaued. What it's doing is it's found that nice little area where it's going to once it breaches through that, it's going to explode through it again. And I think that's nice. what we're probably going to see. Um, now, because the 30-year and the 10-year have pulled back, meaning yields going down, that's kind of restricting the rally on the dollar index. Now, if all of a sudden you see an offer in the 30-year and 10-year, you know, if it starts trading back down to 126 even in the 30-year in the below that price, then you're going to see the dollar index making new move highs. And I think that's something you really want to watch moving forward over the next week or so as we move into the Fed meeting. Nice. Nice. Uh, and how about crude, man? Quite, quite the pullback we got going on in crude right now. The last couple of days, we got a 68.51 price point. We're seeing volatility this morning in both directions, man. What do you think of the crude market right now? Uh, I think that's because of two things. Uh, one is we've had a drastic reduction in yields from Friday into today's trading. I mean, a three handle, three basis handle move in the Treasury bonds is a big move, um, you know, over a holiday weekend, you know, with really no significant numbers to uh, make that happen. So the cost of carryover for all commodities is reduced greatly over to pork from just Friday to t um, today, you know. So in the marketplace, I think that's where you're getting some of the of the reaction in crude. But I think you're also starting to see the, the reality of the BRICS trade that's going on. On. You know, a lot of our allies now are getting around the sanctions. And guess what? A lot of U.S. exported oil is not going to go and find its destination anymore because places that wanted it are buying from the U.S. Well, guess what? Now they're going to get it from Russia and, and the Middle East through other through back office deals. You know, even Japan is now making deals with them, you know. So and I think that you're going to start to see possibly as BRICS continues to grow, that may be the one thing that keeps oil from really rallying because we're going to have two separate oil markets. The global world is buying oil from the, from the world producers, but we're not, they're not buying it from us. And that's going to become a very big deal. You know? So I think if that really is the trade that's going on, oil may, see, may stay stable. Plus, you've got to look at the transports. You know? When the transports get hit, oil gets hit. You know, so that's another thing. So I think as long as the transports are on edge and especially as these BRICS deals continue to grow, I mean, we know Japan just did a big deal with Russia through the back door, you know, so that's a bit they're one of our biggest allies, you know. Yeah. So if that continues, you're going to see the demand for U.S. oil is going to drop, even though the demand physically doesn't change globally, whether it's in the U.S. or globally anywhere else, the way it's being moved and the produ production, especially for the U.S., We've cut production over the last two years. Guess what? Now no one's going to buy it. 
they're going to buy it from the rest of the globe. That's a big problem, especially for the oil markets. And I think that might be something that we're starting to see. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's right, baby. We like it. Folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN, hit the newsletter tab, subscribe to Teddy's newsletter. I just gave you a glimpse of the report he put out Monday. Outstanding information. What you also get in there is a couple of archived webinars that Teddy did. Uh, just did one last month, folks, talking about the second quarter. He did one back there, talking about the fundamentals in October of last year. You get both of those as well. Check it out. Teddy, I appreciate the time, man, as always. I hope all is well, man, and we'll talk to you next week, okay? Take care. See you next week. Take care, Teddy. Folks, we'll be right back for the end of the show. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now jumping around. Let me pull my chart back up there. You're talking about the S&P down about 21 points. We're jumping around in both directions right now in this market. There's my chart back up there for you. We'll zoom in on the action. 41.94. We were just above 4,200 in the last 10 minutes or so. We're back near the lows of the session at 41.95. And yeah, I was jumping around to, excuse me, advanced auto parts, who's down with their numbers 31%. I was thinking about AutoZone. Thanks to our man Duffy in the Den. Uh, which has been on a tear in a one-way direction, man. There's your chart for AutoZone, right? My goodness, from the COVID lows of 750, you came into COVID at about 1100. This thing never went down until it did two weeks ago. This is a weekly chart. Okay, you top out at 2750, and just like that, the stock gave up 400 bucks. Now, 
you had their numbers gap and lower, okay, AutoZone, their numbers on May 23rd, and even with that, which gave you an, an, a little advance in terms of advanced auto parts, okay, but even that, advanced auto parts, still down 32%, even though they got a little bit of a head uh, heads up with AutoZone, but be careful, even my dad was texting me, right? Could be indicative of things in the economy, man, because this thing hasn't even slowed down forever, AutoZone. And guess what? They're slowing down now, and Advanced Auto Parts is. They cut their full-year profit outlook, now expects earnings, 6 to 650 Guess what they were supposed to make? 10 to 11 bucks. This is what you should be worried about, folks, things like that. Oh, we're going to make 10 to $11? No, check that. We're going to cut those earnings in half, 6 to 650 Folks, companies are valued off of their earnings. If you were going to make 11 bucks and now you're going to make 6 your company is worth basically almost half of what it was before that staggering revisions when you look at that type of numbers okay so be careful out there these are the types of things that could really throw a wrench in this market we'll see where we go from there man um it's a wild one and we're back to the s p right now as we are off 21 points and we got a lot looming keep your eye on those inflation numbers folks because i imagine we got a very live meeting coming up two weeks from today and what usually happens is the market is forward looking so don't expect it to wait for that meeting from two weeks from right now. If it figures out things are a little bit more dire than we anticipate, yeah, you might see that go on right now. Thanks so much for starting your day with me, folks. I appreciate it as always. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up next, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great one, folks.